This is the first episode of the series Hardware Hacking Tutorial that is dedicated to everything about hardware hacking. This is for beginners, but also advanced users will find something useful on this series. The hardware hacking process is described based on information gathering of hardware and software, building an emulation environment where to run interesting binaries of our device and eventually reverse engineer them, then analyzing how the device works, uh, and then at the end hacking the device and eventually modifying its firmware. In this first episode we will talk about the first steps of information gathering. The information gathering phase is based on understanding who makes the device, if there is an original design manufacturer, because sometimes a company brands a device or manufacture a device, but another company have designed the device and developed its firmware. Then we start opening the device and trying to identify its main device components. We are mainly interested in the system on a chip and its architecture, on the amount of RAM and flash APRO, but also uh, to understand if there are some other interesting devices. Then we want to locate the UART interface and the JDAG interface. And as a last step of information gathering phase, we want to get the firmware out of the device and extract is a root file system. In this first episode, we will talk about the first steps of information gathering up to identifying device components. I am Valerio Di Giampietro, I have a background in digital electronics and information technology infrastructure, and I wish to be your friendly Italian hacker neighbor, willing to share with you tools and techniques about, about hardware hacking that I learned by myself hacking many devices. So, let's start! This router is the main device that we will use during this uh, tutorial series. The first step in information gathering phase is to understand what kind of device we have and is manufacturer, and also to understand if there is an original design manufacturer, because sometimes a company manufactures a device, but another company have designed it and developed its firmware. This router is distributed in Italy by Linkem. Linkem is the biggest Italian internet service provider, the biggest wireless internet service uh, provider. According to this label, it seems that this router has been manufactured by Linkem, but Linkem is the name of the ISP, so this means that it has only branded it, not manufactured it. The manufacturer is someone else. Looking at the label of this device, we are not able to understand who is the original design manufacturer of the device. Anyway, we can see that on the label we have the model name of the device, the SSID of the router, the Wi-Fi default password, the LAN MAC address or Ethernet MAC address and the serial number of the device. Looking at the manual, we can understand that the serial number starts with the string GMK and then we have six digits for the day of production, two G digits for the year, two digits for the month and two digits for the day of production. Then we have a six digit sequential number. Later we will see that knowing this information is very important to hack the device and to be able to generate the default Wi-Fi password of the device. In uh, this hacking tutorial, we, are, we will always follow the easiest path first methodology. This means that every time we will always start with the easiest path first. So to get more information about this device, the first step, the easiest step, is to search information on internet. So we will search information on internet on this device and we will uh, understand that this device has been manufactured by a, a South Korean company called Gemtech that has many production sites in uh, Asian countries. The first step in the information gathering phase is to look for our device on Google uh, because we are interested to know as much as possible about our device. We can see that one of the first results is the user manual and we also know that the company that has produced our device is Gemtech. Uh, we look at the user manual, but maybe there is 
there is the information that we are looking for because we are mainly interested in the system on a chip, flash EPROM and flash RAM that is on our device. So we uh, return back and we look at other search results on Google. One of these search results is very interesting. It is the search result that the website Tech Info Depot gives us. This is a website really interesting with a lot of information on many, many devices. It is a community driving project, so we don't have official information. And on some device, we have more information. On some other device, we have less information. In this case, we have a link to a product page, but this is an empty link pointing to an internet service provider that has no more information about this product that maybe it has shipped in the past. But we have some other very useful information like the FSCC ID. This is the ID given to each device that uh, is uh, sold in the United States. FCC stands for Federal Communication Commission and uh, gives approval to each device that they, it is compliant with uh, radio emission uh, regu uh, regulations. So in this case, we can uh, click on the related link and we go to the FCC uh, website where the manufacturer has provided uh, some information about the device. If we look at the information available, we can find some interesting information. For example, we can see the external photos of the device, the ID label of the device. In this case, this is not our ID label. It is uh, uh, the device manufactured for another internet service provider. And we can see that in this label, there is the FCC uh, ID. Uh, and we also have other information. The FSCC ID, you can see that is not uh, available on my own device because my own device is sold in Italy where there is, there is no obligation for the FSCC uh, radio emission compliance. Uh, we, can, we can see that we also have other information like for example internal photos that can be very useful to understand uh, how the device is manufactured, what kind of component it has on board and so on. But maybe pictures are not big enough to read the marking of each device component. We also have some other documentation like uh, test reports of um, uh, radio emission tests and so on. Uh, but if we look at the Tech, tech Depot website, we can find some other interesting information like, for example, the name of the system on a chip. In this case, it is a MediaTek uh, chip. We can also see the uh, name and uh, amount on, of the flash uh, EPROM chip and the name and amount on, of, of the RAM uh, chip. This is uh, really interesting information in our uh, initial stage of information gathering. In the links of interest we can also see uh, a pointer to a GitHub project, but this is my own GitHub project where I did a reverse engineering of this router, so it was not available when I started searching for this device. Anyway, in this case, uh, there is a lot of information that I put on my uh, GitHub repository uh, about this device. Another source of information is the OpenWRT website. This is a, a site dedicated to the open source router firmware OpenWRT, but there is a database of many, many routers with information on hardware available on this router. In this case, there is no information on uh, our device, but anyway, uh, it, is, it is one of the sites to search for at the beginning. For example, if we search for another router, that uh, an old router that uh, I have, uh, this is DG834GV4. We can see that we f are able to find a lot, a lot of information. Uh, the system on a chip, how to install the OpenWRT software on uh, this device, and also many other information, including the position, the layout of the flash EPROM, the position of the UART interface, and the position of the JTAG interface, and including also pictures of the, of the router, pictures of his uh, main board, and exact position of the UART interface and the JTAG interface. 
So this website, especially if we are uh, doing some hardware hacking on a router, this is for sure a website to check. Uh, we got a lot of information about this router on the internet, but the information that we got was related to the same part number, but distributed by, by a different internet service provider with a different label format. So probably it has a different firmware and it is also possible that the manufacturer have changed something inside the router, like the system on a chip, the RAM or the, the EPROM. So it is better to open the device and to check by ourselves the components that are inside the device. So we open the device. Usually it is easy to open the device of these sides. Sometimes this kind of device can have some special screw, so we can need some special screwdriver. But in different devices, like for example smartphones, smartwatches, uh, digital cameras and other very small devices, it can be very, very difficult to open them. Sometimes we are able to find tutorials on internet on how to open a specific device and other times we have to find the solution by ourselves and it can be really difficult. On some industrial grade devices it is also possible that we have some countermeasure to prevent the opening of the device, like for example using glue instead of a screw, using glue but to keep the shells together and inside the device. On some military grade device we can also have anti-tampering circuitry that will wipe out the content of the EPROM if we open the device. Anyway, I have put a link below that will better explain how to deal with this kind of devices. Now uh, that we have opened the device, we need to unscrew the motherboard uh, from the device. And we can see that sometimes we have it things that we have to remove to look below them and to understand what kind of components we have below. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it can be more difficult. We can also have metal shield used to shield the radio frequencies. In this case, often it is more difficult to remove. Sometimes it is impossible to remove without damaging the board. If we have multiple boards, there are no problem. We can destroy one board to understand what's below the metal shield and it sinks. Otherwise, if we have only one board, we cannot destroy uh, it. So in this case, we will move forward without identifying the device because our principle is always to follow the easiest path first. So if an information is difficult to get, anyway, we will move forward and we will return back only if absolutely needed. We can look at the var various integrated circuits on this motherboard, but we can see that often it is difficult to read uh, the part number on top of these integrated circuits. In this case, we can try to improve the readability of the part number using a cotton and alcohol to clean up the surface of this part number, then wait for the alcohol to dry out, and then use a chalk over these integrated circuits, then use a cotton again uh, without alcohol to remove the chalk and then after, not too strongly, and then after this it is usually easier to read the part number. We can also use a magnifying glass or a magnifying lamp with the LED light to read the part number on top of these integrated circuits. Now that we have been able to read the part number on top of the integrated circuits, we can search on the internet and usually we are able to find a lot of information, including the data sheet of these, par of these part numbers. But in some cases, especially on some unusual Chinese devices, it is possible that we will find nothing on the internet. In this case, it can be useful to search on a Chinese search engine, like for example Baidu. And maybe on this search engine we will find something in Chinese, obviously, but we can use Google Translate to understand at least what kind of device we have. But in our case, on our motherboard, there is a, a normal device that we are able to find a lot of information on the Internet. The system on a chip is a, a MediaTek MT762180 chip. It is a chip based on a 
MIPS CPU, dual core CPU running at 880 MHz. The RAM is a Wimbled chip, it is a 128 MB RAM chip. It is different uh, of uh, it is different compared to what we found on the Tech Depot website, but anyway, it has the same size. We also have an unusual discrete logic component, it is a 74HC164. Usually we don't have this kind of component on this motherboard, but in this case it can be useful for us because it's easy on this chip to identify VCC and ground and this can be used as a reference point when we uh, need to take some voltage measurements on the motherboard. Uh, we also are able to identify uh, the NAND flash device that it is a 128 MB uh, NAND flash device and this confirms what we found on the Tech Depot website when, when we searched this information on the internet. If you found this video interesting, please subscribe, help this channel grow, share this video with your friends interested in hardware hacking, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below and the notification bell to be notified when new episodes will be released. And don't forget to click the, ups, the thumbs up icon and please give me feedback on the comments below, but positive and negative, I will appreciate any type of feedback, of feedback especially suggestions and also uh, if you have enjoyed this video or also if you don't have don't liked this video, but especially suggestions are really, really welcome. Thank you for watching, see you again on this channel.